There it is. Wah, 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 bay to the bone. Well, I'm here to today to talk about this song, which came out in 1982, Bay to the Bone. I'll give you a little research on the on, uh, uh, background of this uh, particular statement. When I was a kid, I was in a band, I was a, in Delaware, and, I, and, and I, I played a lot of baseball. And I was a kid who was a couple years older than me, named Jerry Street. And I kind of lost track of Jerry, and we were playing a gig at the uh, University of Delaware when I was like in the 10th grade. And I was in a band called The Quiet Ones, and I played bass. And Jerry came up out of nowhere, and he kept saying over and over, Georgie, you, got, you really sound bad. You got a bad sound. This is, this is really bad. And I kept saying, and Jerry, what? I thought we were pretty good. And he kept saying, no, it's bad, it's bad. And then I got it. I said, bad is like the new cool or the new groovy or hip, if you can follow that. And that's what he was trying to say. So the word kind of stuck in my head. So after that, we all started using it, you know, like, um, uh, would say, uh, Sandy Koufax is great, Frank Robinson is bad. See, it was a difference. Uh, you know, uh, Paul Newman was brilliant, Lee Marvin was bad. So that kind of got into my, my head, and there was a kid in the neighborhood named um, Mitch Perry, he would say, bad or what? And this kid would say, it's bad to death, bad to death. And I went, wow. And I'd say, wow, well, that's bad to death. So when we were fooling around with this riff, I started thinking, bad. If you want to make something that works, try to use a prepositional phrase, gone with the wind, that works. Uh, bad to the bone. So I started thinking about that, and I started working on it, and I always was hung up on Bo Diddley's lyrics of Who Do You Love, Rolling Stones doing Jumpin' Jack Flash, and I like those exotic lyrics, those tongue-in-cheek, you know, semi-macho fantasy lyrics um, that Bo Diddley was so good at. So once we put the song together, um, it took a while to do it. it, took me a while to do it. We were on a 50 states, 50 days tour in America and Alaska. We would have done 51 if Canada had been the 51st state, but I, I was a big mistake of mine not to put it in there anyway. I should have. Um, at any rate, we were doing that tour and I was putting the lyrics down. It took me a while. The music was fine. We had the music together. It was putting those lyrics to make sure it, to make sure. So when we finally got it done, I said, hmm. I bet this would be a great song for Muddy Waters. I want Muddy Waters to do this song. So we presented it to his management, um, fell on deaf ears. As a matter of fact, they were almost offended about by the idea. And I said, what are you crazy, man? If Keith Richards had written that song, Eric Clapton, you would have recorded it in a minute. But I'm a nobody from Delaware, and that's where that's at. So I then presented it to Bo Diddley, who did like the song, um, but didn't have a, a record label at the time. Didn't have a record deal. So while we were on this tour, we were just rehearsing it. Never put the sh song on the show. This is one for the ages. We were doing a show with the Rolling Stones and the Neville Brothers in New Orleans. And I was standing backstage, a bad cold at the time, about 104 temperature, 80,000 people. I was not in good shape. It's the 44th date on the 50-50 tour. And this small man comes up to me and starts chattering away. Uh, what are you doing, George? George, what are you doing? You know all about me. I didn't know who he was big mistake on my part. He said, um, are, are you writing any songs? And I said, well, yes, I am. I'm, uh, matter of fact, I'm, I'm trying to write some material. And he said, well, if any of them are like Bone, you're going to do fine. I went, Bone? And I'm like, oh, bad. I said, how do you, how do you, I've never performed, I only did it in sound checks. How, how do you know I'm doing a song called Bad to the Bone? He said, George, it's my business to know. Oh, by the way, I'm David Geffen. I said, oh. see, he was way on top of it. And from that song, with the addition to our uh, live performances that we were doing with the Stones at the time, we were touring with the Stones and Jake Isles, uh, because of that song, mainly, um, and, they, and they liked our, our, our visual, the combination of both got us a record deal with a major label. So um, that song means a lot to us. So and it's a, every time I perform it live, I always look forward to that part of the show because I'm very fortunate that, let's be honest here, probably Bay of the Bone is our highest profile song, so I, um, I look forward, because it's very easy to play. <laughs> Some people are not so fortunate. As time goes on, the key is not good, their voice changes, or personnel in the band is different. Um, so yeah, I always look forward to that part of the show. It's pretty much the peak of the show, and it's a people song, and basically it was written, as I got it down, I said, 
This is something I think the people will like, and so far so good. Hi, Alex here. No, I'm Katie Lee, and I can see whatever I want to. This song, <laughs> we had a video done for uh, for the tour, for the live uh, presentation of this by the guys from South Park. We love the song. We just couldn't figure out how to record it properly and make it sound like Triumph. Uh, so we went, you know, one day we walked in the studio and we sat around and said, okay, what do we have to do to this song to make it great and make it Triumph? And I don't know who said it, said, what would the Who do with a song like this? 